So I thought I'd make a little uh, home video on some of my reloading equipment and some of the basic loads I load. First step of the process is case inspection and case cleaning. And you want to check for splits and cracks on the neck of the cartridge so that they'll hold a bullet good. You want to check and see if uh, the cartridge was fired with excessive pressure. You can check for a crater or a pierce primer or, or polishing along the base of the case from pressure against the bolt and the receiver. Also check for a shiny spot around the head to see if the case is overstretched. There's many methods to cleaning your brass. I don't use a tumbler or or media. Uh, I only reload for a couple of hunting rifles. So I use a little chrome or brass polish and a microfiber cloth and just clean some of the scratches off the case and inspect the case. So, case cleaning and inspection of the cases is the first step in the process. After the cases are cleaned and inspected, the next part of the operation is to recondition the cases. The biggest problem with the case after it's been fired is the neck will no longer hold a bullet. Also, the entire cartridge dimensions no longer conform to the original dimensions of the unfired case. I had been previously loading 223 for my var varmint rifle and I want to show you how to recondition 30-06 cases so I have to take my 223 bullet seat crimp die out of the press and install a 30-06 full-length sizing die. This is an RCBS Mag O press or O Mag press and I think the product name is Rock Chucker. I bought this press in 1975 and it has worked since then flawlessly. So I'm putting away the 223 dies and shell holder and digging out uh, the 30-06 full length sizing die and the 30-06 shell holder to put in the ram of the old mag press so that the cases can be reconditioned and brought back to their original their original size of the unfired case that fits into the chamber of the firearm. The full length sizing die has to be adjusted so that the ram contacts it before the full travel of the stroke of the ram. If this were a carbide neck sizer die, you would not want the ram or the shell holder to come in contact with the uh, sizing die because it could shatter uh, the carbide ring in the sizer die. But where this is a steel machined full length sizer die, 
you adjust it so that the ram is at the top of its travel when it contacts the die and then set the locking ring. There's a set screw and a piece of lead shot on the on the lock ring if you want to hold the preset depth that you've adjusted the die. I do not bother with that. I adjust my dies to the top of the ram stroke every time I use them. It's a different procedure with the with the bullet seating and crimping die. That is that is spaced about a quarter of an inch above the ram at the top of its stroke. But the sizing die, if it's not a carbide sizer die, is brought against the shell holder before the ram is at the top of its stroke. And that's an RCVS full length sizer die, an RCVS number three shell holder for 30 odd six and an RCBS OMAG press. There are many brands of, of uh, reloading equipment and most of those manufacturers make an OMAG press. I just happen to have the RCBS uh, with the product name of Rock Chucker. So now the full length sizing die is adjusted so that the shell holder touches the bottom of the die before the ram is at full stroke. So the die is set to full length resize. The small adjustment screw on the top is for the de decapping rod that has a decapping pin at the end of it. And you want this rod adjusted so that it just knocks the primer out at the top of the stroke and no deeper so that the decapping pin holder and the expander ball do not come in contact with the bottom of the cartridge. If this is adjusted down to where the expander ball can touch the base of the cartridge inside, it'll deform the flash hole and ruin the case. So this has to be adjusted so that at the very top of the stroke uh, the cartridge is decapped while it is being full length resized.